But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Dear friends, it is not for shock value, nor for sensationalistic reason, that we bring you this dramatization of biblically expressed events surrounding the return of Christ, or prime motivation in presenting this mock broadcast is to warn and encourage the viewer to consider his ways in light of biblical prophecy. These events are about to be relate, related, have not yet happened, and so are not an enactment of past history, but a pre-enactment, if you will, of events shortly to come to pass. We pray our production today encourages you to look into God's exciting message concerning the return of Christ. In the continuing war of words, the Russian Minister of Defense has threatened that they have the capability to destroy all the satellites which control communication, including GPS satellites. This was in reference to the U.S.'s intention of being able to soon mobilize an army of a force of 50% robotics. In a sudden, unexpected turn of events, the patriarchs of the churches of Jerusalem have been recalled from the Holy Land to their respective countries of origin. No ecclesiastical spokesman for the Holy See could be reached to explain this mysterious pullout. This is the first time in living memory in which there are no Christian officials at the holy sites in Israel. Obviously, something big is about to happen. The developed world has once again been shown to ignore the incidents of the past. The earth is continuing to feel the effects of our industrial pollution, which has increased the annual global warming temperature another one degree Celsius. Record incidents of coastal cities around the globe being inundated by deadly occurrences of high tides and storm surges overwhelming international relief efforts. Two Christians were arrested downtown today for exercising their right of the freedom of speech when obviously it upset another group whose lifestyle was being challenged. Both of those standing accused had quoted a 2,000-year-old text which condemned the group's moral standards. Ironically, the text is the same one used every day in court to swear by its truth. Some people have called it the Holy Bible. And as this weekend comes to a close, our fair megacity nearly celebrated an entire day without a gun-related murder. Ironically, at 11.59 p.m. last night, a multiple shooting occurred on Placid Avenue during a house party. No witnesses have yet come forward from the over 100 participants. Unfortunately, police will not be investigating this crime due to their legal strike action as of midnight. Now to Frank. Well, tensions are high again in the Middle East. Escalating violence over the last few days has spilled over into the nation of Iran, who after much Christian persecution and anti-Semitic comments by its president, has had its nearly completed nuclear reactor 
totally destroyed. A daring nighttime airstrike was successfully launched again by an Israeli stealth squadron. A confidential news source originating from Israel states that this attack was in reaction to the threats of annihilation from the Iranian government. There were no Israeli casualties reported. An undisclosed source has come forward to tell of their secret affair with another high-ranking government official. Excuse me, we have some late-breaking news. This just in from Jerusalem. A massive armed invasion has suddenly descended upon Israel from the north. Allied to this invader are both African and Middle Eastern nations. Israel's army and air force have been overrun. No sign at all left of any resistance. As our sources relay incoming information, we will presently, in an, as best we can, relay it to you. Peter, this has been a shocking development on the international front. It appears that an all-out invasion has been occurring against Israel, and we, we haven't known it. Apparently, the nation is being swarmed with combined forces that have obviously planned this attack very carefully in order to gain the element of surprise. There are reports of heavy casualties, both in military personnel and horribly the devastation has been inflicted even upon the civilian population. Estimates by foreign correspondents to already be in the tens of thousands. This story has definitely caught us off guard. And because of extensive damage, we have no direct line hookup. That is, no visuals are available from Jerusalem. One of the few reliable reporters able to get through speaks of carnage and mayhem, where marauding armies are pillaging, raping, and killing survivors at will. We will keep you informed as we receive information. We'll be right back after this commercial message. Frank, I have family in Jerusalem. I've got a brother in Tel Aviv. He's an IT specialist. I've got to get through to him. It's busy. Peter, it's of no use. It's too late for this. This whole thing of the invasion of Israel has been planned for a long time. Best you can do right now for your brother is to pray for him. Frank, you know I'm an atheist. I, I don't know how to pray. I wouldn't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I, I, I've still got to call him. Well, Peter, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. This is the event that the Bible has talked about for a long time. It, it speaks of this as the second coming of Christ. You mean the return of Jesus? Well, haven't you heard of Armageddon, of the great battle that people have called it the end of the world? Of course I have. Everyone's heard of that. But are you saying these events are now being fulfilled? Yes. They've waited for this for a long time. This, this is the event the Bible has spoken of. And I tell you, you if you know your Bible, you can see how, how clear it is. In Zechariah 14, I have my Bible here. Let's have a look at this. Zechariah chapter 14 spells these events out. It's a, it's a prophecy at the end of the Old Testament. And this is what it says. Verse 1, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city will be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Frank, you know, I... I've never paid much attention to the Bible and, and let alone believe that an ancient book can, can accurately predict that things that are going on in Israel right now. It's hard to believe, Frank. Well, Peter, this is just the beginning of a number of events of the end times. This is the beginning of a, of a glorious future 
that had the, these events had to happen first. And it's coming, this glorious future. But Frank, what about my brother? What, what about me right now? What are we going to do? Well, Peter, it's uh, interesting. It's, you know, things like this have meant nothing all these years, but now, you see, it's important. And as long as you're alive, there is hope. And we're back in five, four, three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined our broadcast here at the Mega City Downtown Studios, we are the first in the country to report the great climactic invasion upon the tiny nation of Israel. Our reports are of a massive, full-scale invasion by what appears to be Russia and its allies. A swift attack has caught the Israelis off guard. Certain Middle Eastern nations are said to be rejoicing in the streets even as we speak firing off guns in celebration around the Arabic world. Israel is no longer a free state. Many of its people's lives have been lost. Casualties too high to estimate. Frank? Thank you, Peter. Reports coming in are very scant. In fact, uh, it, it seems that communications are dwindling. This has obviously plunged the whole world into chaos and the United Nations are about to be called, or at least the Security Council, into an emergency meeting. The leaders of Russia and several other anti-Semitic nations have refused already to attend, while Western leaders are calling for a complete cessation and withdrawal of the armies in the area. Friends, our, our satellite coverage is disappearing. Even our European correspondence lines of communication are being shut down all over the map. This is a real situation here that harkens back to thousands of years ago when Israel was overrun by the Babylonians and centuries later by the Romans. These things have been prophesied in the Bible and woe unto those who are in harm's way. Yet, according to Almighty God's message to mankind through the Holy Scriptures, even now, all hope is not lost. He plans to save the world from the brink of this disaster. We can only hope, Frank. We can only hope. This is quite a turn of events for the history of mankind. And regardless of what you believe, the world will never be seen the same again. Wait a second. Hang on. I'm actually getting a live feed from our station's Jerusalem correspondent, Rachel Wiseman. Rachel, I can hear you well enough. We're going to put you on live. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Peter. No doubt the world is aware that war has erupted in the Middle East, threatening to spill over to the four corners of the globe. I am now in hiding with a few of my colleagues but earlier we were witness to the dramatic events that suddenly and without warning have taken Jerusalem by surprise over the last few hours. At about one o'clock this morning, Jerusalem time, we could hear hundreds of bombs dropping unceasingly with specific targets, first destroying satellites and then beginning with ground targets of certain buildings, causing thousands of casualties amongst civilians. Within an hour, artillery moved in and so began systematic mortar and machine gun fire that went on uninterrupted as no resistance was left. And then began the looting and killing street by street until only a few screams and random gunshots were heard. The city is in utter chaos and the Israeli army has been decimated. The last radio station broadcasts were calling for all citizens to go into hiding and we could hear traditional Hebrew prayers being recited over the air. The last thing we heard was the announcer plead for his life, a burst of gunfire, and then silence. Wait, there's another shaking in the capital. No explosions, but tremendous tremors, like an earthquake. What we are feeling is an earthquake, but now it's gone quiet. Suddenly everything is calm and quiet. We're looking, we're looking to the east of the city and we can see a brilliant light People are coming out of their hiding places and looking east. It's, it's, it's remarkable.